Right, so this is a video about steering componentry, uh, what's going to go where and the different kind of things that you need to think about. Eventually you'll have some form of go-kart and what that looks like. You'll also have yourself a steering wheel, uh, a steering column that fits into the steering wheel. You're going to have some tie rods, some nuts for them to fit in in the ends, and uh, the steering knuckles that fit on the sides there, as well as four or so wheels. Okay, so how do these all fit together? Firstly, let's go with the steering column, because most people roughly have a good idea about how that works. Okay, from the side, so you'll have the steering column. You'll want to have it fitting into some kind of a pin in the end here. Okay, now the tie rod ends, these things here. So what the, what the steering column does is it transfers the turning power from the steering wheel down to this little rod here. Now what the tie rod ends do is they transfer the steering power from that rod all the way through to the steering knuckles. So these ones here are obviously too short, but when we turn it left, it goes left, and when we turn it right, it goes right. And there'll be some on this other side here, working on that side as well. So let's just have a look at this tie rod end here. At the moment, we've got this um, steering column's uh, spoke sticking forward, and when we turn it right, it goes right, and when we turn it left, it turns left. However, if we were to change it, and turn it so that it faced the other way, and we turned this around here so that it went that way there, it would do exactly the same thing. When we turn it left, it would go left, and when we turn it right, it goes right. So the main difference between having it at the front and the back is about how much foot space you get. However, what you can't do is you can't have it facing backwards and forwards at the same time. Because what will happen is that if you want to turn it, if you want to go right, the wheel will go left, and if you want to go left, the wheel is going to go right. Yeah. So um, one of the other things that you're going to need to think about when you're cre uh, designing your steering is going to be how much camber you want to have on your wheels. Now a lot of people like the idea of having lots of camber, however it does affect quite a lot how you drive. So I'm just going to go over that right now and how that works. Alright, so uh, first off, what is camber? Uh, camber is the angle Get that out of, the way. of the wheel. Um, if you've got the cart here and the wheel is angling in towards the cart, that is positive camber. If you've got the um, wheel and the wheel is angling out this way um, on the stub axles, that is negative camber. So what are the effects of ne negative camber? Most cars will have little or some negative camber, uh, which means that they'll be angling out that way and means that when um, the car rolls into a corner, it will roll into it and uh, gain more traction as as it goes around that corner um, because you get more um, surface contact on the wheels. Um, now one of the other effects of camber is that it affects the self-writing um, self ability of a car. Um, because when you turn left or you turn right, um, when you're in a car and you let go of the steering wheel, center itself up, um, which you notice as you're turning, as you're learning to drive. And it's kind of hard to explain how that happens with this small wheel. So I'm just going to get this large one just to um, help show the effects of how that works. So how that works is that we've got this wheel, right? And um, with a strongly exaggerated negative camber, this here is the center line for the axle. That's where the weight of the car is pivoted. So when you're going straight, it's at one height. And what happens is that when you turn, that actually raises up. Uh, because of the camber and the um, diameter of the wheel. So it's here now, but when it turns, it actually raises up a section. Um, so the force that's self-riding the wheel is actually gravity acting down on the wheel, wanting to push it down, and as it happens, it drops down again. Um, so that's one of the positive effects of um, the camber. But also, in saying that, if the camber is too much, it means that when you try to turn, and you want to turn left or right, it will be harder to make that turn because you're having to 
work against gravity. So the positive effect of camber is that it means it's, um, it self-writes better, but the negative effect of, of too much camber is, is that it makes it harder to, um, to turn left and right because you're working against gravity. So with all that being said, with these little go-karts and with these things here, ideally you want to have about four degrees camber, which is um, um, four degrees out from um, horizontal. So that's zero, four degrees is just four degrees up. Um, so anywhere between four and six is ideal, but we find that that works. Okay, so that's been me talking a whole lot about camera and how that works. But that's pretty much all that you really need to be thinking about. Um, you've got your tie rod ends, you've got your steering brackets, you've got your steering column, your knuckles and your steering wheel. And it's just a matter of fitting them together to make sure that they work the best for your team and for the sizes of your team and so on and so forth. All together added in there's quite a lot of variables in there for you to be thinking about. Um, but the thing that you want to think about that'll help you make you help you make those choices is um, who is in your team and making sure that it works for them. Alright? Uh, that's pretty much that. Uh, get into it.